Coach, uh, heading into Central Washington week now. Uh, just where where is your team at after after a tough loss like that? Is it are they in a good spot from from playing a, a much better game, maybe the best game that you guys have put together this year? Or are they is that a, a tough one to take? How how do you feel about it? Well, personally, is you know, I don't necessarily want them in a good spot. I want them to be. Uh, urgent about the timing. I want them to be, uh, you know, a bit angry about the, the loss, a bit of, and all that, and a righteous anger, having that focus come out of them to say, okay, we're, yeah, you're close, but not close enough. We need to get the win. Um, you know, there's some, yeah, obviously, uh, statistically, it's a, there's a lot of great improvements. I, I thought we, well, we made strides uh, in, in a lot of positions. I mean, defensively, even offensively, seeing the thing, and then even special teams wise, but you can still see that in this league, uh, turnovers will kill you. Um, and also the fact that everybody has great talent, everybody has players that can be game breakers. And so, uh, you know, we give up 21 points on a total of three plays. And that's, that's, uh, that's evidence of just showing you that every play matters. You know, we, we played lights out for a whole game, but if you give up 21 points in three plays, you know, that makes the other team a better team because they end up getting the win. So that's where, uh, as a staff, as a, uh, a team, you know, we're all in this thing together. We're, we're urgent about the moment. We're urgent about how do we improve our process. And so we're going to look at that hard this week. And I uh, just got out of a staff meeting this morning, and that's just basically the whole thing. How do we get our players to uh, take that next step forward in their technique and their commitment to each other? And as a staff, how do we put out a better effort? How do we... Uh, pay attention to details all the more, and so this uh, this move up to the GNAC conference brings you uh, to a whole new level of what it takes every week to win, and we're excited about that. And then talk about that that balance within the GNAC. You've seen the best of it from last year's champion. You've seen uh, you know Dixie State didn't have a great year last year, uh, so you've kind of seen the whole range so far. Yes. Uh, just in, in your first two games, talk about and all those games last week were very close games between uh, I think all three. All three conference games were very close. Well, that's where you're seeing the, the, the league's wide open, and there's like I said, everybody has talent, everybody has a, a hunger to win. There's a, and I love it. I, I, I'm I'm so thrilled to be in this league and just of what it does competitively for us every single week. So um, that's one of those things I think it helps us in, in a, as a staff and as a program to take the building champions mission statement while pursuing championship to say, okay, we're going to put some bigger teeth in that whole thing and understand that hey, these young men um, and even the staff, everybody's got to kind of really pay attention to the close details because the close details are what is going to get their future businesses to that next level, their future families, their future you know relationships, whatever that may be, is the close details that matter. And right now we're a program that is uh, who relentlessly looking at the close details flipping over every stone that we can. At the end of the day, what you want to be able to say, win or lose, is you played your best game. Now, we haven't done that yet. We haven't in no way. And so, um, but then also the other day too, we want to win. And so we want to make sure though in the process all the way through, everything's a winning process. And so we're looking at it hard and it starts with me and it starts uh, you know, with the rest of the staff going forward. You know, following the game, tough loss for you guys. Um, how are you going to use that to motivate you guys going forward? You touched on a little bit uh, just now, but this week we're details, and then what else are you guys going to do just to, uh, I don't know, take well, that loss? Here's, here's what I want everyone to understand that's in this program, is that um, it's these details that matter, and it's also it's a matter of getting beyond this comfort zone where you're just kind of relying on your athleticism to get you to that next spot. We need to get to the full potential. We're taking from the, from the, the comfort zone is just relying on your athleticism. The full potential means you're pre preparing yourself every single moment of the week, whether academically, socially, uh, 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 athletically. Uh, you're, there's a focused attention to your life, and that's really what we want. And that's what this game has, and this new league and, and where we're at as a program has brought to our attention. Um, and it's an opportunity for me, for the staff, and these, and these players to say, hey, there's a focused attention to relentlessly pursue the, pursue the best of my life. And so uh, I think that's enough of a motivation. Whatever future dreams these guys have, it's going to come down to what are they doing with today. 
So uh, they are decision makers, and their decisions need to be decisions that are uh, are full of great positivity and future focus, not just uh, hey, what do I make me feel good at the moment, or what did the, what did somebody tell me about my athleticism last year? So uh, growth mindset is everything we're looking for right now. Coach, what does the uh, quarterback situation look like after shuffling around the first couple games? Yeah. Um, Tui Asisoko getting the start uh, this last game. Did he solidify that starting spot, or is it still an open battle, or what's that look like? Well, I think quarterbacks, like any of our positions, you know, you're it's a it, it's a little bit more tender in how you handle it with rotations, uh, but it's always being under evaluation. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're taking a hard look at these last two games with our quarterback situation, and obviously a quarterback takes a lot more blame and a lot more credit than they should. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be very fair to that position in regards to uh, what really is into the position's control and what isn't. So that's part of the staff and what we're evaluating moving forward. So it, it, but it, that, like any other position, is always uh, under the microscope and it's always open to competition what's going on. So uh, we, will, we need everybody to take that next step forward, and competition brings out the best of that. And so that's one of the, we don't... Uh, we don't put the uh, quarterback position in some sort of glass jar to say, hey, it's hands off. It's, it, this is, we expect competition all week long from that position as well. And then sticking with the offense, talk about the, being able to get the running game going. I think the way right. that you guys are used to doing, the way you established it last year, um, you know, Terrell was very solid, but then Oliver Petty uh, with his production. Just talk about how nice it was to get, get that going and to see that strength like you envisioned right. that it would be this year. Well, you're finally starting to find some continuity at the O-line. Um, we've had a, the injury bug has been uh, not in our favor this uh, this beginning of this camp and this season. So we still have a lot of those guys who you project out to be starters. They're still on the injured list. So now when you find an offensive line, uh, begin to get some continuity, some uh, some relationships, some some awareness of each other, and an expectation of what uh, the next person is going to do next, to, uh, standing right next to them. Now your running game begins to develop. And Oliver Petty. Excited to see what he's did. He's done. I mean, he's been on the injured list for quite a few years here. Now to see him have a, a game like this to step out uh, from the full potential we believe he is in uh, pursuit of, uh, that's exciting. So, and with Terrell, obviously he's a tough, tough physical runner. Um, he's a staple of what we do. Um, but we, we we have some running backs that can that can get after it when you start using those more. And the scoreboard said 24, but your defense only gave 12 points last game. How excited were you to see? Um, their effort and what they brought for you guys. Well, excited the effort, just disappointed the loss. I mean, when we go in this team meeting tonight, I, mean, I, I expect you know everybody to be have an ugly uh, uh, feeling in their stomach. I, mean, I don't want anybody patting themselves on the back like they're separate. I mean, we, we win and lose together. Um, so um, honestly, then it's, it's twelve it's twelve points too much. You know, if we don't, so that's that's the way I look at it. Is that this league we're in, you better play tough defense, and um, you know you can't be comfortable, uh, hey, we only gave up 12 points. That's 12 too much in my book. So we're going to we're gonna fix that and, and continue to play great defense. You know, we're, I mean, we, we're going to be pursuing shutouts. I mean, pursuing, uh, hey, we don't, we don't ever feel happy about giving up anything, you know. So that's just how we are here. And then does this stretch remind you at all of uh, a few years back, just some of the close losses, uh, you know, a younger team right. uh, kind of learning how to win? And then what, what do you want these younger guys to take from these games and, and to use down the road as right. this is how you become a winning football team? Well, here, here's what's going to happen. As we've, we've gone through some similar situations, and usually at this point you have people take responsibility or take off. And, um, you know, what I want is them to take responsibility. And if they do that, they're going to find uh, a much um, a much higher standard for themselves. That they're going to uh, they're going to experience a uh, performance that they right now is just a little bit beyond them. That we know whether it's possible for them, but they they've been having to rely on athleticism so much as being a young guy, whether in high school where they just wouldn't take a field, they're just a better athlete. Now you take the field, and your athleticism is matched. So um, with those guys that who are going to go into self preservation mode. At some point, they're going to take off, and they may, maybe they don't leave the team, but it's more of a hey, they just uh, they they put themselves to the sideline, or you just don't see them engaged. Uh, but we're not going to allow that. We're not going to allow, as a coaching staff and as a, as a veteran leadership in this group, uh, we're not going to allow those type of people to to bring us down. We know we know where we're going. We know what we're building. We know that this is uh, this new division two is going to be a challenge. We expected that, 
and um, you know we've played some of these GNAC teams quite a bit in the past. Now you're playing them in the league schedule. Um, there's a lot on the line when you play it, and so we, we knew going into this this is going to be a, a tough one. But I think until I know well, I know this until the 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 human nature experiences it firsthand, um, there really isn't any compelling reason to adapt. Now you've got a lot of compelling reasons to adapt, and the, and the team sees it, and so. Uh, we're going to be out of our comfort zone for a while, and with that, and once we, we leave it, we're going to hopefully be in a in a new uh, a new reality. That's a it's a tough, physical, focused uh, team that says, "Hey, when we take the field, we're here to win, and uh, we're here to play uh, 60 minutes of a uh, of one blood football." And speaking of that that GNAC schedule and adapting to that, uh, how does the uh, the approach change having the home and home series now, knowing that you're going to get another chance at? Humble at Dixie and uh, kind of have to keep that in the back of the mind or what does that approach look like as far as moving on from the loss but still remembering who that team is? I think that's, you're going to remember who they are a lot, a lot quicker. You know, instead of waiting that year to play them, you're going to have a chance to go back, play them again, get their place or, or at home, either one. Um, it forces us, the way we perceive it is you continually focus on yourself right now. I mean, without winning right now where our guys, we can see on tape things that we just got to take care of our own business. And, um, but I think what it also does is it increases the rivalries, it increases the emotions of the game. You know you're going to see this person or, uh, that's playing in front of you in a few weeks down the road. So um, it's, it's excellent competition. I think it's, uh, it's actually something we were a little bit apprehensive going into the league. Now that you're in it and you know you get a chance to play again, uh, it's, it's a fun deal. So it's, a, it's, a, it, it's exciting, but like in the end, we just got to be good at what we do. You know, we, we can't necessarily out try to out scheme ourselves. We've got to be good at what we do. And, and uh, once we cross that bridge, then uh, we can look at trying to out scheme somebody. And uh, talk a little bit about Central Washington. That's one of the GNACs historically, uh, uh, one of the best programs. Uh, what, do you, what do you expect to see out of them um, after seeing what they've done the first three weeks? Well, they're, they're off to a great start. They had a tough one against Kingsville, and Kingsville's a great team. Uh, they, but they, they haven't been home yet. They've been having a long road schedule. You know, I think for them, they're going to, I'm sure they're going to be fired up and excited to be at home, just the same way we were. So, uh, you know, they're always athletic, always, uh, you know, fierce group. Uh, you know, I, they're one of, the, you know, they're one of the the big boys in the block when it comes to this league. You know, historically. So, the, uh, you know, but then I look at it, and you know, that's what it speaks a lot about this league to say you have a Western Oregon, a humble state, a Central Washington, to see Dixie on the right path, to see Simon Fraser on the right path. So this league is full of competitive, competitive programs. And, you know, uh, what people, what maybe the Division II world, uh, maybe not get because he plays there twice, i tell you what they have, is they have, they have a lot of the teams in these leagues that would go be champions of a lot of other Division II leagues. So we just happen to have a lot of big boys on this block. So we're going to grow up quick and, uh, and get after this thing.